Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lecture, we're going to be looking at an example with energy balances on a reactor. And our goal is that you will, by the end, also be able to solve energy balances with a reaction and a temperature change. In this example, ethyl acetate is synthesized from ethanol and acetic acid by the liquid phase esterification reaction shown here. The feed to the reactor will contain 100 moles per minute of ethanol and 100 moles per minute of acetic acid at 25 degrees C and one bar. The product stream will be at 50 degrees C and one bar, and it will contain 13.7 moles per minute of both ethanol and acetic acid and 86.3 moles per minute of ethyl acetate and water. And you could have calculated that last bit from a material balance uh, given the extent of reaction or the uh, quantity of any one of those products. What we want to know is what is the rate of heat addition to this reactor? And if we're going to do something with heat addition, then I need to do an energy balance. And therefore, I need to make some assumptions. So I'm going to start by assuming that, first of all, changes in kinetic and potential energy are minimal, and also that the work in the reactor is zero, or the shaft work, to be more precise. And so therefore, I could write an energy balance that says that Q is equal to, for all of my species, it's the mass flow rate times the enthalpy for each one of those. And so my products times their enthalpies, or the product stream, minus my feed times its enthalpy. But I need to also think about my calculation path. So I start with uh, the feed, which is a liquid at 25 degrees C and one bar. When working with reactions, it's helpful then to consider that I break apart all of my reactants. And then after I've broken my reactants to, apart to elements, then I'm going to take those elements and recombine those to products. And then the final step in my calculation path would be to then heat the stuff, um, this final product to the final conditions, final temperature and pressure. Now if I do that, then my um, enthalpy changes at each step. This first one, this is going to be my heats of formation, or actual, the negative heat of formation of all of my reactants, my feed. This is going to be my positive heat of formation of my products. And this can be done by integrating C sub P dt. This step here is also the same as the heat of reaction. And I've done all of this at the standard set state. Based on this calculation path, I get this equation for Q that says that I calculate this based on the number of moles in the reaction times the heat of reaction. So this is only the amount that does the reaction, plus everything that comes out in sub I from 25 degrees to 50 degrees C times the integral, of, well, of the integral of C sub P dt. Now, which of these two do I want to use? Well, if I had data on all of the enthalpies, like a data table, then I could use the first definition, but given that what I have is information to get heats of reaction and C sub P data, typically the second equation is going to be easier to use. Let's start by looking then at the heat of reaction. 
I'm going to get heat of reaction by taking heats of formation of the products minus heats of formation of the reactants. In this case, the stoichiometric coefficients for all of these are 1, and so therefore I don't have anything to multiply by. I just need to look up data. And the data I found results in a heat of reaction of negative 5.13 kilojoules per mole of reaction. And in this case, uh, for all of these, uh, they have a stoichiometric coefficient of 1, so it could be per mole of water or of ethanol or of ethyl acetate, etc. Okay, so I have that. Now I'm going to want to multiply this by the molar flow rate through the reaction that actually reacts. And so how many moles reacted? I brought 100 moles in, but I have 13.7 moles that are still unreacted of my feed. So therefore, only 86.3 moles per minute react. The next thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need to be able to do the integrals of C sub P dt for each species. So I need C sub P data. The data that I found is for C sub P and joule, joule, ugh, joules per mole per Kelvin, temperature in Kelvin, and C sub P is the form A plus BT plus CT squared. And so therefore, what I'm going to need to do is calculate the sum for all of my components n sub i integral from 25 plus 273 these in kelvin to 50 plus 273 a plus b t plus c t squared d t now that's going to be in joules per mole kelvin N sub i will be in moles per minute. T is going to be in kelvins. So I'll end up with uh, joules per minute. And I want kilojoules to be able to add it with the previous result. So therefore, I'm going to divide by 1,000. And this will give me units of kilojoules per minute. I will take this answer and add it to the previous result. Uh, this answer, if you follow it through, is 618.5 kilojoules per minute. And therefore, Q is equal to negative 5.13 times 86.3 reaction moles plus 618.5 or 175.8 kilojoules per minute. This concludes this example. Thank you very much for your time.